It's a privilege to be sitting here introducing Paolo to you and a proud moment for me. I just wish that we could be in Lyon to celebrate his achievements in person. I first met Paolo when he was still an undergraduate at the University of Adelaide and he appeared um, on a post-conference field trip attached to a small conference that we had which went to Kangaroo Island. And on that field trip, uh, it became apparent that he was a student of enormous promise who identified himself by his enthusiasm and his willingness to initiate conversations, not only about what we were seeing in outcrop, but also on more wide ranging topics. And I was thrilled when shortly thereafter, I think perhaps at the suggestion of my old friend John Foden, one of his mentors at Adelaide, he applied to do a PhD at the Research School of Earth Sciences, the Australian National University, in our group um, of experimental petrologists. As soon as he arrived in Canberra, it became apparent that Paolo was an outstanding student who was interested in just about everything and was prepared uh, to use equipment available to answer all sorts of questions, not necessarily intimately connected, um, with the main topic of his PhD thesis. Um, one example would be his interest in Comartiites, and um, he initiated this project to look at uh, the chemical effects that you get on uh, the rapid cooling and associated crystallization of olivine. A highlight for me was that we used the opportunity of the Prague Goldschmidt in 2011 uh, to go on a um, small two-man field trip to the Ivrea zone um, in northern Italy and have a look at the upper mantle peridotites there. Now anyone who knows Paolo knows the pride that he takes in his Italian heritage and um, it was a great experience to see him land on Italian soil for the first time and put his linguistic abilities to use. I think that uh, visiting Europe um, gave him the idea of uh, doing a postdoctoral fellowship there. And um, he went around um, a number of different laboratories and fortunately for his further development ended up in Fred Monnier's group in Paris. And um, it was there also associated with another Goldschmidt, um, the one in Paris in 2017, uh, that I spent a most enjoyable month um, furthering our joint interests in a wide variety of topics, one of which he will be talking about in his lecture after this. Meanwhile, um, it is also a pleasure to hand over to Fred to continue um, the Paolo story. Thank you. Well done, Paolo. Thank you, Hugh. It is now my pleasure to say a few words about Paolo, with whom I was personally very lucky to interact with for four years while he was part of our laboratory at IPGP in Paris. Paolo and I originally met during the Goldschmidt meeting in Prague in 2011, where we discussed zinc and iron isotopes in between oral presentations, work that he had been doing with John Foden as undergraduate. I was already quite impressed with his knowledge on isotope geochemistry for a first-year PhD student. It is only later that I realized that Paolo was also excellent in experimental petrology, where he was mentored by Hugh O'Neill. I then also realized that Paolo is extremely creative, and these qualities, together with his strong work ethic, certainly make him one of the very best people in our field. Luckily for us, as you said, Paolo has a passion for Europe and was very interested in coming to the old continent. What impressed me the most was his mastery of the literature of both isotopes and experiments, better than I personally do, even in isotope geochemistry, not to mention petrology, which allowed him to perform complicated experiments with a wide range of approaches, piston cylinder, isotopes of vanadium, copper, zinc, etc. Moreover, he built a gas control furnace in my lab with which he was able to publish a very important paper on volatilization. In other words, Paolo is a very gifted experimentalist who is never afraid to devise new experiments 
both in petrology and in isotopes, and compare them with theory. He is full of original ideas, and he has an enthusiasm for science that I have seldom seen, all the while remaining very humble. Paolo worked on many important projects while in Paris, but I would like to single out his paper on using vanadium isotopes to study irradiation processes in the early solar system, as it was very much outside Paolo's comfort zone. Thinking about this topic a few years later, it was probably not the most efficient project for Paolo to start with. But given that Paolo had learned vanadium isotope geochemistry with Julie Pritulak during his PhD, we thought that the stars had, the stars had finally aligned to complete this project. Paolo had no problem in getting up to speed with the literature on a topic that he was not at all familiar with, before discovering the first vanadium isotopic anomalies in refractory inclusions, combining them with boron isotopic data acquired in Nancy and writing a very solid paper that is now a reference for the evidence of irradiation in the early solar system. It is also very different from most of Paolo's other papers. After his time in Paris, Paolo moved to the ETH Zurich, where he continues to work on combining experimental petrology and isotope geochemistry to solve planetary formation questions, such as the effect of evaporation to shape the composition of terrestrial planets. To conclude, it has been my honor to work with Paolo, and it is a delight that this achievement has been recognized today. And I am sure that Paolo has a very bright career ahead of him. Congratulations, Paolo. I am looking forward to celebrate with you, you and Hugh in a not-too-distant future. <laughs>